Welcome back then from me, Tim Cable, and from Glenn Catley here at the D-Side Leisure Centre. Let's get the ring introductions. Let's continue with the action from D-Side Leisure Centre and live on Eurosport TV right across Europe. Time now for 10 three-minute rounds of light middleweight boxing. Firstly, introducing, making his way to the blue corner from Birmingham, it's Mad Max. So 49 and 3 is at pro record since turning pro only back in October 2006. And uh, his career did appear to be going nowhere fast between September 2008 and December 2009. He fought 10 fights, losing seven of them. And it appeared the uh, fledgling career would be coming to an end. But he fought a credible draw with Prince Aaron at the York Hall at the end of 2009. And that was something of a turning point, really, because it gave him some hope. Since when the following seven fights have brought him five wins, the loss in there was a return against Aaron in May last year. And his last opponents, the first of 2011, Ryan Clark. Did him as well. In April, it ended with a points of victory his last time out. He's in a big puncher. Uh, just four opponents stopped so far, uh, which represents a 11.5% KO ratio. I mean, he, this guy isn't a big puncher by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, but he's back on track. He said his career, he's feeling confident and he is ready. And now, making his way to the red corner across the ring. Ladies and gentlemen, by Magic Beeside, introducing from Connors King of Wales, Dustin Tom Dunn! As you can hear from the reception, he's got plenty of support here. 23 years of age, he is just tonight his 10th outing. He made his debut back in May of 2009, second time out in 2011. Inflicted a first loss on the career of Jamie Benes, stopping him in the first round at the Robin Park in Wigan back in March. But his opponent tonight is much more experienced than anything else he's faced. Certainly the only one whose win record better than his lost record. It's his first 10 rounder as well. And this, remember, a British title eliminator. Ranked 12th in the UK after just nine fights. He spars with the Commonwealth champion, the welter champion Denton Vassell and Prince Aaron. They know each other very well. He'll have given him a bit of insight into the man he's facing here.
Ladies and gentlemen, introducing from Birmingham, it is Mad Max Maxwell! Certainly can't be taken lightly here tonight by Tom Doran. Wearing this evening the blue shorts, fighting out of the red corner on my left. He brings to the ring a 100% fight record. Nine fights with nine injuries. On the scales, about 69.1 kilograms. And fighting this evening out of Connors Key, North Wales. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing the undefeated Ladies and gentlemen, our referee, Mr. Howard Foster, will now give his final instructions to both of our boxers. Spoke to you both in the dressing room, you both know I expect. Keep it clean, break straight away when told, and both of you watch your heads. Good luck to you both, touch gloves. Good luck, lads. Ladies and gentlemen, so, time then to see on your screens, perhaps for the first time, what all the hype is about. There's been plenty written about Tom Doran. Uh, plenty of comparisons. I've seen him uh, compared today in, in one interview to Roberto Duran. Uh, quick, he's powerful, uh, very good footwork. A uh, good amateur career as well for Doran. 80 odd fights, the majority of them won, but Maxwell is no mug by any stretch of the imagination. The aircraft fitter in the blue trunks, Tom Doran against the former Navy commando. Oh, he's got him down, has he? That's a standing count. He walks straight onto a right hand there. Right onto a right hand there. Caught cold. So Maxwell stuns him. Maybe he needs to just bide his time now rather than get drawn into a war. But this is a big night. A British title eliminator here. And Maxwell, he might be at the opposite end of the career in terms of his age to Doran. But he's still determined to get a shot at the big time. One big shot for him. Looks like he's weathered the storm there, Doran. Yeah. Looks like his head's cleared somewhat. Just simply caught cold right at the beginning of the round. And as I say, keep your hands up at all times. Well, he uh, trains with his father, amongst others. Shane Thomas, who's been around him for many, many years as an amateur and indeed a pro. We've all been talking extremely highly, not only just of his fighting abilities, but as the, as the man in general. Again, Luster getting close. That's another good right hand back from Maxwell. He's not elusive, is he? No. He's there. He's a fairly sitting target in there at the moment. Maxwell got him where he wants him. He can be hit. And again, another dangerous right hand. Well, he said he's, uh, he's a counter-puncher, Doran. He's more boxer than brawler. Well, Maxwell is more brawler than boxer. And that is what we're involved in here in this first round. This is more of a brawl. This is more Maxwell's fight every yeah. time, you know, for sure. Speed, Max, speed. And the blood just beginning to seep from his nose. But he's, what, half a minute or so left in this first round. A very tough first round. The counter-puncher coming off second, and he's taken another big right hand. He's in big trouble here, Doran, he could go again, and another big one. He comes back with a right of his own, and Maxwell is in. The referee has stopped it. Well, well, well. Unbelievable. Well, that has got to be a, that's a farcical decision, isn't it? Absolutely terrible decision. Absolutely terrible. farcical decision by the referee to step in and stop that. Doran was in big trouble there. Absolutely, yeah. I see. 
this is what brings the, the, the sport and what's what brings the game into disrepute. I mean, you know, I mean, let's you know, let's not beat around the bush. Does he look as if he was uh, a guy that needs to be stopped? Absolutely not. Max, what well, Maxwell was hurt, yes, but in the light way, so was Tom Doran on but a he couple of occasions. In and gave him a, uh, a standing count. He didn't give him a single chance. It was a terrible, terrible decision. We've seen this a few weeks back with Amir Khan. And, um, where he's got every right, every right to be seriously, seriously hacked off with that. Yeah, why stand there to hear the referee's decision? He's totally disgusted, and rightly so. What an explosive first round, though, that was. Tell you what, though, I've wiped some of the invincibility away from Doran tonight. There it was. That was the beginning of the... There's the one he took, and another. Right. Well, you've been in this business longer than I have, and those decisions don't do anything to... <clears throat> Not at all. This, this is... Assist the sport and wipe away some of the problems people think that there is deep rooted within it. Forty-two seconds of round number one. Our referee, Mr. Howard Foster, deems Max Maxwell in no position to defend himself. Therefore, our winner and still undefeated as a professional boxer, ladies and gentlemen. Well, I give him some credit because he's still in there. He's still unbeaten. And he took some pretty big shots in there. He did indeed, he did take some good shots. But, um, you know, very disappointed in the referee. This is boxing, this is professional fighting. You know, this isn't tiddlywinks. He never gave Maxwell any chance to recover. He said he never given a chance. He wasn't, it wasn't in a, I mean, the, the, the MC said he wasn't in a position to defend himself. He wasn't given a chance to because the referee just literally jumped in. He took a couple of good shots. Yes, he was hurt a little bit, but he jumped straight in and never given the chance, which is a shame. And his, a decision like that is unfortunately sours the sport, brings it in a little bit of disrepute.